Hi, so first um, for our spring 22 TFCB list, um, the internet has changed the way science is communicated. In 1994, there were fewer than 3,000 websites. 10 years later, there were more than a billion. People have instant access to more news and information than ever before, and conversations that used to happen with people you met in person have been magnified by websites and social media. Scientific knowledge has simultaneously been demonized and devalued. The line between news, knowledge, and entertainment has blurred, creating the illusion of being informed. Written by chemistry professor and science author Mark Zimmer, Science and the Skeptic shows readers how to spot fake versus real science, covering basic scientific methods and the vetting process published scientific papers go through. It also discusses the dangers of spreading false information and empowers readers to know which sources to trust. Since 1970, bird populations in the US and Canada have decreased by 3 billion. The declines show up across a range of species from familiar backyard favorites, such as sparrows and blue jays, to long distant migrants, such as swallows. Bird populations in Europe and Asia have also plummeted. At the same time, ducks and geese populations have increased with help from wetland protections and bald eagles and several raptors are flourishing thanks to a ban on DDT and specific protection laws. These success stories show the power of conservation action. A follow-up to author and biologist Rebecca Hirsch's 2020 title, Where Have All the Bees Gone? Where Have All the Birds Gone? examines the state of birds in North America and around the world, chronicling the evolutionary history of birds and examining their vital role in the na natural world. The book looks at the threats birds face, especially habitat loss and degradation, and also looks at the successful efforts to protect them. It includes a call to action and specific ways young adults can get involved and protect birds, leaving readers with a message of hope. Of the nearly 1,800 poems that Emily Dickinson wrote, only 10 were published while she was alive. The majority of her work was discovered written on scraps of envelopes and napkins in a chest in her bedroom after her death in 1886, when it was collected, edited, and published by competing persons, each with their own agenda. For decades, Dickinson was a mysterious recluse and the focus was on her poems about nature. It would take many more years before she was taken seriously. Today, Dickinson is revered as one of America's greatest and most original poets. Dickinson scholars call her a formidable intellectual, a theorist of media, an environmentalist, and a feminist hero. Using primary source materials, including the poet's own letters, Quiet Fire presents the life and art of Emily Dickinson to a new generation. Women continue to fight against sexism in the workplace, and sports remains a very gender segregated career. Officials often refer to base understandings of supposed biological sexual differences to justify unequal support and pay for female athletes. As young girls grow up, they will likely face sexist attitudes towards their athletic performance and capabilities. Trans and intersex athletes often deal with especially unfair rules. And while Title IX has secured essential rights for women in sports at high school and college levels, it hasn't eliminated inequality. Author Kirsten Cron Mills provides young adult readers with a comprehensive view of gender inequality in sports, covering contemporary issues such as equal pay for female athletes and specific discrimination cases such as that of Olympic athlete Castor Semenya, as well as recent state laws regarding trans athletes. The book begins with a description of the problem and outlines the difference between equality and equity while exploring how sports may reach equity in the future. Our brave new world is here. With modern genetic technologies, science fictions, what if has become the scientists, why not? Glowing Bunnies introduces middle grade and young adult readers to the possibilities, dangers, and ethical issues involved with bioengineering animals. Science has the potential to remake animals in almost any way we can imagine, and it's currently being used to solve a range of urgent global problems, including climate change, species extinctions, conservation, human health, and food industry issues. This is as exciting as it is unsettling. With reassuring wry humor, author Jeff Campbell delivers the material with equal parts entertainment and seriousness, creating a book that can be enjoyed for its own sake while supporting STEM, natural sciences, social sciences, and humane education curriculum. Authors Hallie Bondi, Sharon Lynn Pruitt Young, Mary Fernandez, and Zara Hanawalt take the insult, difficult bitch, and turn it on its head. If the term has been used to demean women for standing up for themselves and others, 
pursuing their own wants and needs and taking care of their bodies and minds, then perhaps it isn't an insult at all, but rather a label for courageous, powerful women. Using hypothetical scenarios and concrete examples, each chapter in How to Be a Difficult Bitch teaches readers critical life skills, such as how to identify healthy and toxic relationships, how to accept one's body, and how to participate in activism. To give readers a variety of views on what that means, Bondi's co-authors present their experiences coming to terms with their identities and learning to seize their own power in ways that made sense for them. Full color illustrations of girls of different races, abilities, and body types underscore the book's relevance to anyone and everyone. The text is written in an assertive style sprinkled with quips to make this a fun read that will inspire girls to take charge. Author Erica Marcus has over 15 years of experience working with young people as a mindfulness educator, classroom teacher, outdoor educator, and senior wilderness youth therapy field staff member. Through her extensive work with young adults, Erica recognizes how technology use is deeply impacting this generation and hijacking their attention. Attention hijacked is a roadmap for young adults to help them make mindful choices about their own technology use, gain insight into their struggles, identify blind spots, and develop strategies to address concerns. It covers research about technology use and the intentional manipulation of attention of tech users, and it guides readers to set personal limits while understanding that tech is now an integral part of life. 